So hello everybody, uh, it's nice to have you here. Uh, it's Edward again for another live stream. And uh, today is kind of a special day for us because uh, we're going to talk about ACID-V, uh, our first remake of the TB303, the ACID bass line. So um, I must say I'm quite happy to introduce you to this product because it's been so long we wanted to uh, model this instrument, but yet we haven't done it so far. And uh, as uh, some of you know, we love synthesizers and most of the people here are really passionate about each and every kind of synth synthesizer you, you may expect. But uh, so far, we've been talking about doing the 303, we've been talking about it, but we never really committed to it for many different reasons. And yet, we really wanted to have uh, this famous instrument uh, within the collection, and now here it is. So I'm really, really happy uh, to talk about this instrument. And now, uh, a few uh, topics I would like to, uh, you know, to, to talk about. Uh, first of all, you know, it's an instrument who definitely influenced so much the music industry uh, for, from the 90s in techno and house, you all probably know even got into like pop music and nowadays in many different genres like even though it's maybe not the main you know the the main aspect of the music you can find some 303 sounds like in a lot of different songs in a lot of different music genres and uh, you know even people who don't really make music who just like are passionate about dancing and so on when this moment come where the uh, the acid sound kicks in, they know what it is, you know. So uh, at some point, you know, we wanted to to go for it, and I've, we felt like now is the time. Uh, you know, I went in a festival this summer, and I heard so much 303, and I was like, yeah, it's still in, you know. And even though some people are kind of criticizing the fact that it's always the same sound and everything, well, we wanted to make our own. Uh, version of it and to show you what it what it is uh, when we give our own take on this instrument. So yeah, now uh, oh here we are and uh, yeah. So basically, we've been modeling since for ages, and uh, at some point we wanted to you now we wanted to to start this project. And uh, I've seen comments online like people saying, "Whoa." Maybe they did it because it's a, it's a, it's an easy synth to model because it's so small, right? But uh, I just wanted to mention this is absolutely not true. Uh, the way it's designed is a bit weird, and there are a lot of interactions between between all parameters, and which makes it a bit hard to tune, you know. And uh, even the filter is really hard to model. So it's been quite a tedious task, actually compared to the size of this instrument to uh, to get here and and you know and it's it's still a pretty old instrument so uh, when you have several units around you and you listen to them well they have they all have oh my plugin uh, got in demo whatever um, you know you take five six units and you realize like all of the units are sounding different so uh, it's not an easy task to, you know, to model this thing. And some people might say, oh, this doesn't sound like mine and it's normal, you know, and which is good because each and every unit that you own is, uh, is like unique. And so we took several units and we tried to take the best from each of them. And we tried to fill the sound into the three of we want we wanted to have at home. So here it is. And, uh, you know, uh, recently there were a lot of YouTubers who released uh, videos of the products. So uh, I don't think I will just do a complete tour of the features of every details. But what we can do instead is maybe uh, I made this small demo track this morning. And maybe I can dive into this track and show you how I use it and why, uh, you know, explain why we made uh, certain choices like how how is handled the start and stop, how to uh, export from the sequencer, all these kind of small tricks that can make your life easier in a production environment and especially in a computer. And yeah, so uh, yeah, let's dive in. Uh, I mean, 
so I have this uh, this main line here. So the first track. So I'm gonna open this in this uh, this one. Uh, so this is the main line, so we can just solo it and listen to it. So this one is pretty interesting. Uh, so this one is very simple. I made a little bit of variations uh, afterwards, but first we can maybe talk about the sound of it. Uh, so this one is pretty interesting because on one side, uh, as you can hear, there is a lot of noise in the sound. And this is the, the noise of the engine being amplified by the distortion. So uh, of course, when we model uh, synthesizers, we want to make them simple, but we will still want you to have a little bit of depth uh, in, the t in the tuning, especially if you feel like you can reach a slightly different sound, maybe closer from the unit you used to know back in the days, um, from the unit you you listen to a friend's studio or something, and you know this sound, like with the with the very distinctive noise, uh, comes from the circuitry. And when you open this panel, you can see that we have a lot of different trimmers here. And basically, this sound is uh, using the the noise of the circuit at almost its maximum level, so which makes it really prominent, but actually it fills really well the space in the track, you know. Like we can listen to it again. And almost like a, acts like a shaker, a groove, uh, you know, a drum. And it's pretty nice and uh, it's really, really cool when it's amplified by the distortion. And basically you have a lot of other trimmers. Uh, you can boost the bass or attenuate it. Uh, it's These trimmers are actually pretty deep in the engine. These are really changing like uh, resistor values and stuff like that. So uh, it you cannot expect it to be tuned or modulated like a normal parameter, but it's actually really fiddling the, the core of the engine to make the, the sound a little bit more like uh, yours. And there are other options like bass boost is pretty useful, changing a bit the timbre of the square, you know, changing the, the accent attack to make it whoa even, even longer. Uh, accentuating the cutoff range because the original unit is very narrow, you know, and you can extend it if you'd like to. And uh, sorry again for this. Uh, I don't know which of my plugins in the drums uh, turn in, into demo, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, so this is part of the core sound, and it's really nice. You also have a clipper, uh, which is which mimics like the 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 mixer of the unit, and in some units it can clip pretty hard if you turn the volume all the way up. And uh, on this plugin, you also have like the the, the distortion, which kind of uh, adds a little bit of texture. And another big detail uh, is the sub oscillator, which uh, is uh, layered with the sound. So like this, it's, it's more like a lead, but with the sub oscillator, it's like a very very strong like bass and lead. And uh, we'll see a bit later in the forthcoming lines, but uh, it's actually a great way to create variations, automating this parameter and uh, turning maybe uh, the, the, the baseline into a small lead just for a moment uh, and create variations in the sound. And this is actually uh, the kind of stuff that is uh, that was a bit frustrating for me uh, when using uh, 303 uh, clones in general. And one of the questions I've seen uh, online pretty often is why uh, do we have to trigger it using the keyboard and not with the start-stop? And my problem with this kind of logic with the start-stop is that you, you are working in a box in your door environment and if when you have another sequencer inside, well sometimes you know when you press play you don't want it to start so you need to mute the track uh, and so on. You know. And I feel like when you are using while well, MIDI clips to trigger your instrument, it's much more, uh, it's much easier to you know decide whenever the instrument is playing or not in your arrangement, and it's also the case like uh, it, it makes the arrangement phase more like easier, and also it's very very uh, convenient if you want to create variations, and uh, so maybe we can check at the second pattern uh, here, so. So here uh, I had my first line, which is rather simple. Uh, 
And now I have a second line. And this is one of the advantage of, uh, of having this like uh, logic of triggering with MIDI notes, is that first it transposes the, the sequence to the key that you, that you need. And secondly, it starts the, the sequencer. And here, my first line was really, really flat, really normal. And now I just introduced a little bit of variations, just a few, just to make it a bit more subtle. And uh, you can see here. So I don't have to mess with the internal sequencer uh, if I want to transpose stuff, etc. Of course, uh, we have also other modes like uh, arpeggiator or turn of the sequencer. We'll talk about it a bit later. But this this way, it's easy like to quickly transpose and quickly, you know, uh, create variations without having to export another pattern uh, and all these kind of, uh, of problems that can arise uh, from this. And um, what else can I say? Uh, on, on this preset, well, I think this were the main aspect of the character of this song. Of course, uh, if I look into the interface, well, it's probably using modulations, yeah. So this is another aspect uh, of the thing that is really, really nice, is that if you listen to the pattern, I, I literally like loaded the preset, set some keys, and I did not do much except than this. And now, you can see that the sound is not static, it's, uh, it's moving, so it's building up energy. Because like this function generator is uh, modulating the is modulating the cutoff and other parameters. So out of the box, uh, I can already have something that is pretty like alive without having to draw myself the automations. And uh, Sometimes it's good to be able to do it yourself, and if you don't, you, you want to discard it, you just have to double click here, you know, and di uh, and disable the modulation. Or you can actually, if there is a shape, uh, a movement shape in the sound that you don't like, you can watch it from the visualizers here, and easily you are over this uh, this little area, and you can disable the 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 modulations. So it's super easy to get rid of it. Uh, same for the effects, you know, you can mute them all, all the way. Uh, in one click and yeah so uh, so this is why I created some variations and uh, afterwards uh, I introduced a new track here so I wanted to something a bit more like uh, a bit less 303 I would say and, uh, and uh, that is complementary to the main line uh, so here I used a very simple line again on the main line, and now I introduced uh, a new um, a new preset. So I took uh, one of the first presets in the in the factory library, and uh, what I did. So initially it was like a uh, it was it was a sound like uh, wow, maybe you rec recognize it if you, uh, if you already listened to the presets. But what I did is uh, I actually set the sequencer to arpeggio, uh, arpeggio mode. And here I wanted to have a bit more freedom and play my notes and everything because I really like the beginning of the, of the pattern. And uh, so I, I use the arpeggiator mode and it's really more like flexible if you want to input notes the way you want. And uh, so I made this and the arpeggiator mode allows me to like to do uh, small variations like I did before, and uh, I really like the sound it makes. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, of course, when you're using the arpeggio, the arpeggio, uh, if you made a sequence with like some grooves using accents, vibrato, all these kind of uh, parameters, well, when you turn on the arpeggiator mode, like the note won't play won't play back again because uh, of course uh, you have to play it with the keyboard but all these attributes will remain and that's pretty groovy you know you can start from a, a pattern that you like and play it yourself and arpeggiate it and it's pretty flexible so this is what i, I did here and uh, in terms of workflow i really like it other competitors have it like fortune too and it's really nice um, so uh here, uh, basically, it was pretty, um, like pretty flat, pretty like uh, just a normal lead. 
So I wanted to bring a bit more like uh, variations uh, and uh, and same thing for the for the first line. So on this line, what I, what I did first is I introduced some vibrato and uh, maybe we can talk about this parameter. Uh, so it's present in the sequencer and you can activate it uh, whenever you want. And you can even like uh, set its speed to like very high uh, speeds and do some kind of FM effects with it, which is pretty nice. And um, what I did also to ease like the, like when you want to fill the sound is uh, introducing like some override of the parameters. So here it tells you with the LED when there are some slides or accents enabled, but you can also uh, trigger it yourself by clicking on it or with your MIDI controller. And it helps like uh, doing very short, uh, very easily like bring uh, variations to the pattern. And this is what I did here. So I recorded this and I introduced some vibrato to make the sequence a little bit more groovy. And I then introduced some accents like this. And it's really, really useful if you want to make transitions a uh, little bit, uh, bits of surprise when you when you work on your uh, arrangement. And uh, I did pretty much the same on the same line, you know. So uh, I used the uh, automations uh, volume uh, on the sub oscillator volume to turn it into a lead, uh, like this. So it's very subtle, but uh, the sum of all this on the two uh, tracks is creating some variation, and it's all about this kind of details that I that I that we make we made some choices like this because we wanted to simplify the way you use this product, and I think this is the the biggest thing here. Of course, we added a lot of possibilities like FX modulations and so on, but this you could actually do it uh, from your door. Of course, in the box, you have the presets that feature it, so you have a wider spectrum uh, of sounds, which is rather surprising, I guess, for a lot of people, because sometimes you have presets that sound like a, uh, very, like very trancy leads, like a, that goes a bit beyond what you could expect from the instrument. And uh, these kind of details, uh, like uh, the workflow, is really what is game changer, because you're going faster, it's inspiring. And uh, yeah, so the sum of these little tricks is really useful to get something done quickly and to create variations and not being like bothered with like uh, cumbersome wor workflows and so on. So yeah, and um, when, when I was saying like uh, you can have pretty weird sounds, etc., like stuff that you didn't expect, well, uh, we can maybe look, look into the look into the this next sound that that is coming up. So uh, here, so here I have a trance lead. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. So uh, I'm gonna loop this part. And actually, this preset uh, doesn't really uh, sound like a 303, right? It's more like a pretty nice trance uh, lead with a lot of effects. And um, so I thought it was pretty complementary to the other track I introduced. And um, yeah. So here, just because we have a, a lot of uh, different effects, you can automate the effects, which creates, uh, which opens the door to a lot of variety in the, t the things that you can do. Well, you can do this kind of stuff. And uh, even Isla was surprised how complementary all these sounds uh, are running together. To be honest, I didn't really look for presets. I just picked uh, the first ones and tried a few stuff. Uh, and uh, thanks to the modulation and these effects, you know, you can do uh, this kind of uh, a preset. So here I wanted to do a very, a very small break. And um, so we can maybe listen to the second track uh, I've made. Uh, so here, I will first explain you how I did it because I think it's part of what is interesting in the workflow. And uh, so let's listen to it. So the second track with the uh, the rest of the drums and so on. So this is the break. So this little melody, so I just use one note. So 
So I'm going to jump in the sequencer and show you how it's made. So here I wanted to show you guys uh, how first can we generate, um, how can it generate sequences thanks to the transmutation uh, feature. And maybe how we can make a small sequence uh, feeling longer and feeling like, um, you know, more infinite. And this is thanks to the polymetric mode. So uh, basically, I didn't write this pattern, I generated it. And uh, so maybe I can just give it a try with you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna discard maybe the sound of it right now. And uh, we're going to start over. So I'm going to turn down the polymetric mode. And and uh, set it to, six, to 16 steps. And uh, basically, I will explain you uh, what is the transmutation. So it's a smart way to generate sequences, but we didn't want it to be uh, fully random. We wanted it to you know, have something that can create results that are interesting, more intuitive, and that actually fits the baseline aesthetic, but still uh, giving the possibility to go a bit beyond. And uh, what we did uh, to do that is we introduced a new way to uh, set up scales. Uh, so here on the left of the panel, you have all the parameters. You can set the, the rate, the choose the pattern, thanks to a preset browser. Uh, we even have some tributes, uh, sequences. I will let you uh, dive into this and maybe feel nostalgic or... I'm pretty sure you can have a laugh. And uh, you have other parameters like the rate, the gate length, which is pretty nice to uh, do like to do variations as well. You can go from very short steps and, um, and go then to the opposite and do very long uh, notes, which is really nice if, want, if you want to make maybe a groove variations without really writing everything again or or if you want to preserve the gimmick of your sound by having one very uh, like repetitive bass line that is like mesmerizing but you want to make it groove uh, in a different way modulating this parameter okay, it is really nice and um, so here i have this like a uh, trancy uh, melody and here i selected the acid trap style um, uh, scale. So I just wanted to mention, so on the right, it's the kind of classic scales we had uh, from back in the days. You have you have them on other products, which is pretty convenient if you have a, um, you know, a, a track and you want to introduce a 303 and you're using a pattern that doesn't really fit um, your scale. Well, you can use it to, uh, to define maybe, uh, let's say you are using a harmonic uh, minor scale. Well, you just have to set the right key uh, when playing back, and then it's supposed to match uh, with your track, which is good. But on the other hand, on the left side, you have the acid scales. And here, um, maybe uh, we should have uh, called them like generative scales. And these are really made to help you generate cool sequences. So, uh, for example, if I select the, the first one, which is pretty nice, uh, this will like format the 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 result of my generation and as you can see here you have all the notes and you have uh, some kind of like levels and this is like how likely the note will appear in the in the generation will be found in your in your generative uh, generative process and so if it's all the way down you won't have this note ever if it's all the way up it will be super often that you will uh, have this uh, this note so usually what is smart to do if you're doing, for example, custom scales from this last button is always for bass, for bass lines, is always having a very strong weight to your uh, fundamental and then try to fill with the, the best notes you feel uh, um, uh, for the rest with like uh, small uh, occurrences or mi av uh, middle average occurrences. And the more it's like uh, focused on the fundamental, the more it's like really bass line. Once you selected the scale like this, you just have to click on this generate button. And uh, when clicking on it, it will uh, it will just generate a new a new melody. And if you feel like it's too flat, you can increase the amount by uh, by raising up and when you release it will 
it will just uh, spread a little bit more uh, the, the notes that you will get. And uh, here I just generated something, it sounds decent. We can do it uh, several other times. And as you can see, it works. Like uh, pretty much every result uh, I had are, are actually working. So we can try with this maybe. So, yeah, <laughs> I should be ashamed, but this is actually the way I, I built this bridge. Like uh, I used one of the other presets to do this like very trancy lead, which is really nice. And uh, to generate this pattern, I literally generated uh, a few sequences, found one that I liked, and uh, basically my bridge was done. And that's it. And this is all about these kind of details that we tried to focus on and you know we just wanted to save time to people and you know to encourage them to use these kind of sonorities uh, by you know by attenuating the pain points you can face when you're working in the box and uh, and yeah and it's it gets super easy and for example if you're working like uh, on your arrangement sometimes it's good to get out um, of the box and 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 to to just let the dough run uh, everything so that you can just work on your structure and on your track and when you're doing this well uh, you can uh, you can export your pattern from here and drag and drop it uh, directly in the dough for example uh, just to show you you're doing like this you drag it and you have it it's here so it means that you can also, uh, for example, generate several stuff, export them, and place it wh wherever you want, and it makes your life easier, which is pretty cool. So yeah, and um, and yeah, and for example, th this pattern is pretty nice, uh, but we could uh, even improve it a little bit. So maybe we can just enable the polymetric mode. And one important detail when using polymetric, uh, usually. The reason you, you want to use it is to um, first avoid working on a, lo a large number of steps. Here you have up to uh, 64 steps. But when activating the polymetric mode, well, it will chunk the pattern to 16 presets. And you might wonder why, but actually it's just that with polymetry, what is good is that with a very short um, sequence, you can actually have very, very like complex uh, results. And uh, and for example, what is good to do is uh, setting the length of your sequence to uh, odd numbers, so that you will need a lot of different rotations to end up with the same result. And here, so I have a different length, uh, and if I press play, Compared to before, you kind of keep the core of it. You know, you can recognize the sequence, but the small variations, well, their, occur the, their occurrence is kind of more spaced out, and it feels more like a, like something you have duplicated several times, and then that you modified by yourself using the mouse. You know, and that's really really nice because you're keeping the the core gimmick of your sequence but you're actually having something like that can last longer that you can hear longer and you know to create ambient patterns uh, rather than very very uh, repetitive stuff things that you would expect for a 303 then you can create maybe more like a ambience uh, you know and dreamy uh, sequences uh, that you can listen for a long time which is good so yeah it's really convenient and yeah, so this is my new uh, my new sequence, and uh, it works. 
So. And we're back to the main line. Yeah, that's cool. And to be honest, I was literally impressed myself because, you know, on a daily basis, you're working on a project and you focus on each and every detail. But sometimes you miss like the core experience of being the user, you know, and, and you're just like uh, giving everything you have to make the best product as possible. And uh, I, I was away for, for in, uh, in summer in vacations and so on. So I, I, di I didn't take my computer, so I couldn't really spend time making music. And this is one of the first time I actually have a moment to make music with the product with an objective, like, okay, I need to do a live stream. Let's build a few ideas and let's see what it goes so, so that we can maybe do something else than just watching at each and every feature one by one. And I was really impressed how easy it was how the pain I had with maybe other clones and you know, other software being locked in the sequencer, play, pause, uh, how do I do my arrangement? Okay, I will just bounce, etc. And here it was really easy. So even I, uh, I'm really surprised and I'm really happy because uh, I guess, you know, people will say we don't need a, another clone. Well, I don't agree, man. You know, like uh, if, you're feeling better working with something and that the sound is good and maybe that the sound palette is even wider we definitely we need more like uh, more acid stuff and uh, first there is not enough uh, 303 in our life and i think it makes you happy so yeah so yeah basically that's pretty much the things i wanted to show you guys and uh, you know don't don't forget like all these little tricks to make your life easier, to create variations, the transposition, uh, automating these like uh, these like uh, performance buttons on the on the front panel, uh, these ones, you know, yeah, you can even MIDI map it on your computer, and you can just uh, let a loop run and press them at some moment, and it creates like really really uh, convincing variations, and you don't have to mess with your sequence, uh, like. Of course, we can export the sequence from the sequencer, but if you don't feel like exporting it because you don't want to, whatever the reason, well, you can make easy variations like this, uh, and it's, it works pretty well, you know. This like uh, variations on the on the accent, on the on the vibrato, it makes it like re less uh, recursive. It's really easy. So you have a mix of really the rotating, mesmerizing thing, repetitive thing, and the variations. So yeah. Um, and uh, of course, like I, I didn't really spend time doing a tour of each and every feature, but we've seen some of the features in action in in the like these four tracks. You know, we had the Subosk uh, on the on the first uh, on the first uh, main lead. Uh, on the main bass line, uh, you have the vibrato on the second more ambient patch. The distortion, of course, we've seen it everywhere. And this distortion with this cool, anim uh, this cool uh, animation, well, uh, it's not exactly the same distortions as you can find in the in Cold Fire, for example, because here we've been curating them for the 303. So basically, it sounds a bit different because there is internal EQing before the distortion, after the distortion, and uh, so that you could have, like, let's say, the classic timbers, like, uh, like for example, like this, you know. So this like sound really like the classic uh, blade bass line, the club, you know, scene. If you know, you have the if you know the the movie. But you can also have like uh, stuff that look like more like uh, some more round stuff, some more aggressive stuff, more folders. Some more classic. 
or even stuff that look like uh, a bit like uh, you know uh, beat crushers like this so it's like really polyvalent uh, or 12 or something so don't be shy with the distortion uh, I guess this is the right instrument to overdrive and you know you you can even have a laugh with the cool animation so yeah and, and don't forget you have a very very wide array of effects afterwards and of course like the core sound of the emulation is really key uh, you know it's the let's say it's the basis of the good instrument but nowadays like you know, uh, just a raw sound, a raw, a raw uh, 303 pattern is kind of, I can understand some people saying it's meh because, you know, you already heard it, it's very limited, but it's sweet spot everywhere. But I think the key is like to reuse these sounds uh, in the genres you like and try to, you know, create a little phase in your track uh, with some cool energy and tweak it the way you want so that the sound gets actually yours and and for example thanks to the built-in effects if you review the presets and so on you will you will find great ideas on how can i you know turn this acid sound into something more like contemporary and i think it's good to have classic sounds but it's also very good to have something that goes beyond what you know and to discover uh new timbers through the experience and through the the uh, preset listening and through the exploration of the effects and modulating these effects and so on yeah and don't forget to use the modulators as well especially if you're lazy you know just compared to one static pattern just having a cutoff modulation to build up energy and so on co uh, in conjunction with the effects and you will get something like pretty easily con uh, convincing and that is different from what you get from your uh, classic uh, 303 clone from your hardware and so on and compared to a hardware, you don't need to plug it. So it's, uh, for, from, from my point of view, it's really nice to be able to recall your sound and to work later if, you have, uh, if you're at work or if you have your kids or whatever. It's just flexibility. And I'm pretty sure you, you cannot really make a difference between the, the, the emulation and uh, an original uh, 303. Uh, like the difference will be within the range you can find between the different units. So. I'm really happy like to come up with this instrument and I really hope that you like it. And uh, yeah, so maybe now we can uh, switch to the questions. Uh, if you guys had some uh, things to ask me or, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go through what you guys asked and then uh, try to answer the best I can. Okay, so uh, the first question is, is it possible to lock the sequencer to a key? And uh, what if I'm working on a track in B minor or something? So uh, I will jump back to the, to the interface and I will show you that. So like I said in the beginning, uh, so I'm just going to create a, a pattern and loop it here. Uh, so, like I said, like the start stop, unlike the other competitors, the Roland one, ABL three, uh, stuff like that. Well, we chose not to really use start stop like this to start the sequencer, but we, ch we chose to uh, s uh, to use the note. And what it does is, when you press a note, the sequencer starts, but actually it also transposes the 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 sequence. So let's say you're working in B. <laughs> well, you just have to to go to B. And then you have the right key. And if the pattern you're using, for example, maybe in the factory library, uh, it doesn't like uh, doesn't fit the scale, then at this moment, what you can do is use the is use the scales here uh, and set it to minor. You know, and supposedly it would work because it's the right key and it's the right um, it's the right scale. So yeah. Um, it would work. So next question. Uh, okay, so someone is asking what are the effects that are uh, onboarded on this instrument. So first you have the distortion module, uh, 
uh, I talked about it uh, before, and which of course is uh, you can modulate it. Like you just have to drag and drop like this, and there it goes. So it's really easy. And of course, you have the FX rack. Uh, so you have four additional FX slots. Uh, so if you want, you can actually stack five distortions. I tried. Uh, but you can also select from, uh, uh, let's say, almost uh, 17, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah more than 15 effects. Like from uh, special effects, like reverb, speed shift delay, normal delays, dynamics, like uh, is uh, embedding compressors or even multiband compressors. So if you really want to dig into the very super modern sharp sounds, well, you have pretty much everything you need, you know. And there is also one effect I would recommend is the super unison. So it's really like a super huge chorus. And it's like it gets super, super wide. And uh, I really love it. So you can even tune like the filters, the only process, just a, a band of your sound, leaving the subs uh, alone and so on. And it's really, really nice. And you, of course, have some different chorus, flangers, phases, uh, other distortions, uh, beat crusher. So pretty much everything you, you need in a toolbox to get started. And of course, if you have uh, plugins that you really like that are specific to your sound, you can use them on top or even mute the section or in, in individual effects uh, from here. So yeah. So uh, next question now. Let's jump back on the questions. Is there any? <laughs> I expected this one. So uh, someone's asking if there is any chance that Arturia brings uh, acid hardware or actually this instrument in hardware. Uh, that's a good question. Um, personally, I would like to make one because I love three uh, threes, but. Uh, it's all about the market. I think now there are some clones that are very, very, very cheap. And uh, it would be hard to match this price, I guess. And um, of course, we could do something that is like much more like uh, expanded and so on, like this uh, Avalon bass line that is like really insane, but uh, kind of expensive at the same time. Uh, so right now, we don't, <laughs> we are not working on this instrument, but you know, one day, who knows, you know. But in the meantime, you have the you have the software package, so uh, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, work on your computer and maybe use your clone when uh, when you feel like uh, the screen uh, is uh, making you tired and because it hurt your eyes or something. So, uh, next question: uh, Are you planning on adding oscillator phase with trigger? Uh, I've seen people asking for this. Uh, I guess I would like to. Uh, you know, I have. Uh, so I was at the Boom Festival this summer, and in the Psytrance, they are very, very meticulous with kick, bass, and phase, and all these kind of details. And that's true that in the beginning, we, we didn't really pay attention to this because we wanted we wanted to keep this like uh, analog feel and so on. But uh, yeah, the other day I tried uh, to do something like this, a bit more like precise. And uh, it's true that having the phase moving around is sometimes a bit uh, cumbersome if you want to do very surgical stuff. So uh, I will try to add this in the next update. And, uh, and uh, I'll probably add it in the side panel uh, you know, with the small gearbox on the top right. You can open the settings. And this would be a, a nice place to, uh, to add this parameter. So look out for the updates and uh, the release notes, and I uh, hope that we can make it happen. So someone else uh, is going on for on another topic. Uh, uh, someone is asking if we are going to do a mini Korg 700 uh, emulation. Uh, so I really like this instrument. Uh, it's definitely something I, I have in my mind. Uh, the only problem I see is that uh, Korg is doing an emulation already. So, um, okay, I know what you're thinking. Uh, we, uh, we just did uh, MS-20 last year. 
So, uh, and we did it in partnership with Korg. So, I'm not saying we won't do it. We might do it one day. I don't know when. But actually, this is a very good remark. It's a very, very fantastic instrument. Even the look is amazing. So, um, watch, watch out for the forthcoming years. And to be honest, if we can make it, I will be really happy because uh, I've always been impressed by the sound of it. So, finger crossed. Alors, um, okay, someone is asking me to show, uh, to show again uh, how to drag and drop a pattern in uh, your DAW. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back on the on Ableton Live. So, I'll take this, uh, this pattern here. So, here I have my sequencer. Okay, I'm going to even generate the other, other sequences just for the fun. Blue acid. Acid dreams. So yeah, so let's say I'm happy with this. Uh, so now, uh, what, I, all one, uh, what I need to do is go to the top of the section here. And uh, you can see actually there is a tooltip. So if any time you're lost with, uh, or you wonder what is this parameter for, don't forget to watch to the bottom left of the interface. And any parameter is described with a pretty concise description. And here you can see that the first button is save, if you want to save your pattern um, in the system folders. And here, uh, the export button lets you drag and drop. So all you have to do is like hold click and drag, and ta-da, your pattern is here and is ready to be played. So that's pretty good. And you know, if, for example, you want to create a you modulate, uh, for example, the gate or this kind of uh, parameters. As soon as with, uh, if it's done with uh, the internal modulation, well, we will take into account these modulations. So let's say I'm uh, modulating the gates to uh, make a variation on the, on the length of the note. Well, when you drag and drop here, it will bounce basically the pattern and you will have your modulation uh, that is real, like uh, reconstructed in the pattern. Also, it's uh, maybe important to note that when you're exporting a pattern, uh, you, you really want that the octave, but uh, the octave variations are right. You want the slide to be correct. You want the accent to be there. You want the vibrator to be there. And each of these parameters are recalled when exporting. So the octave is just de determined by which octave the note is placed in the, in the pattern. The slide is created by creating an overlap between the two notes and it will automatically slide. The accent is uh, defined by uh, the velocity when you go above a certain level. Uh, I think per default it's 100. And the vibrato is uh, actually uh, setting the mod wheel CC, uh, engaging the mod wheel CC. So um, it's kind of important to remember these parameters because at some point you might decide to mute the sequencer and set it to external like this. So either from this uh, view you set it to external or either from this view you disable it. And uh, once it's done, the notes you will send to the 303 will be like uh, interpreted, if I can say, uh, the same way as it, as it, it was the sequencer playing. So let's say you own a key step row or a B step row. You can definitely use the acid V and turn the sequencer off and uh, sequence it with your bit step row. So if you want, for example, to interact with the hardware when programming sequences and so on. So it's pretty nice. It's flexible. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to jump back to the questions now. Uh, maybe there are a few other remaining. So what people are... How many presets are included? Uh, I think there are more than 150. And uh, talking about presets, 
let's say you have made a sequence that you really like. Uh, if you remember when I uh, when I was disabling and enabling the sequencer next to the on off and the sequencer title, you have a little locker and you can lock the sequencer, meaning that you can browse sounds and keep your uh, your sequence uh, locked so that you can, you know, try and figure which is the best sound for your sequence. And it's pretty convenient. So, um, yep. And uh, the second part of the question was, uh, do we plan to add more sounds in the future? Yes, 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 of course. Like, uh, like you probably know, in Analog Lab and in Pigments, uh, we have a preset store. Uh, you have free content. You also have like uh, expansions uh, with like uh, with like different prices depending on the size of the banks. And of course, uh, later on, we'll make uh, dedicated banks, uh, and these banks will be like uh, theme based. So maybe we'll do a I don't know a, a Goa a bank or a Acid Techno Bank or uh, even I don't know Acid Trap, whatever you know. So we'll. We'll find ideas and we'll um, work on some content for you guys and I hope uh, this will be inspiring. And uh, I think uh, that's all for the questions. Like most of the other questions have been replied uh, in the chat by other colleagues uh, who were watching. So, so yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you had a great time. Another one maybe? <laughs> Is there a third sunstorm pattern in the sequence and preset? I think I know who is asking this uh, question. Uh, and uh, I think, yes, it is. Uh, if it's not, I will add it in an update. I promise. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we're done with the questions. And, uh, well, it was not the usual format, uh, maybe a bit less structured. But I wanted to show you some stuff that other YouTubers uh, didn't really show you yet. So more like uh, why we made certain choices, why I think it's more adapted to working in a DAW environment and it makes your life easier. And it's, yeah, and why it can maybe even get inspiring. And I hope you get inspiration from, from this instrument. I mean, you know, I was expecting people to be divided when releasing this product because there are some people who are not really into the 303 overall. And it can be for several reasons. It can be the sound. It can be the usability of the original product, which is really, really hard uh, you know, to, to get in your hands and to get comfortable with. And uh, yeah, so, um, you know, don't be, don't be shy and try the demo. It's free and just make your own opinion of, in my opinion, this instrument is one of the funniest. You know, each and every knob you turn, it sounds good. It's only sweet spots. It's even more sweet spot than the minimum. So it's really rewarding. It's not too complex. You can just explore and have fun, you know, generate uh, sequences, turn the knobs, add effects, add distortion, start over, export your pattern. And I hope that it will, uh, you know, help you get fresh ideas and bring a bit of spices in your forthcoming projects. So uh, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, it's always a pleasure to share a moment with you. And I uh, hope we see each other next time for a new product and uh, new surprises. So uh, take care, everyone, and uh, see you next time.